Hello, I'm Dr. Hogg, pastor and head of staff here at Westminster. I know how hard it has been having to self-isolate and how scary it can be listening to the news coverage. As difficult as this time is, we believe that God is working with us now to bring strength and comfort. Starting today and continuing weekly, we will post a time of music, meditation, devotion, and prayer to help bring the peace of God into our lives a little stronger. I hope that you will join either Dave Tucker, our ministerial intern, or me each week, and that it brings you comfort. One of the things that I enjoy is looking at scripture, particularly as I look at the daily lectionary. It's one of the ways that I figure out what it is I'm gonna preach about on a Sunday. And when I looked at today's scripture readings, two of them caught my attention when I think about what we're going through right now. So let me start with the 143rd Psalm. Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my supplication in your faithfulness. Answer me in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit faints within me. My heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I think about all your deeds. I meditate on the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you, my soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Save me, O Lord, from my enemies. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your spirit lead me on a level path. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your steadfast love, cut off, cut off my enemies and destroy all my adversaries, for I am your servant. What I like about the scripture is the way that it reminds us that the troubles that we're going through today are not the first time that God's people have gone through troubles. In fact, the second reading from this particular day comes to us out of the 32nd chapter of Jeremiah. And it's about a time that the people of Israel were going through some very difficult situations. So I want you to hear these words. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of the king Zedekiah of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. At that time, the army of the king of Babylon was sieging at Jerusalem, and the prophet Jeremiah 
was confined in the court of the guard that was in the palace of the king of Judah, where King Zedekiah of Judah had confined him. Zedekiah had said, Why do you prophesy and say, Thus says the Lord, I am going to give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. King Zedekiah of Judah shall not escape out of the hands of the Chaldeans, but shall surely be given into the hands of the king of Babylon and shall speak with him face to face, and see him eye to eye. And he shall take Zedekiah to Babylon, and there he shall remain until I tend to him, says the Lord. Though you fight against the Chaldeans, you shall not succeed. Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came to me. Hanamel, son of your uncle Shalom, is going to come to you and say, Buy my field that is in Anathoth, for the right of redemption by purchase is yours. Then my cousin Hanamel came to me in the court of the guard in accordance with the word of the Lord and said to me, Buy my field that is in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, for the right of possession and redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of God. And I bought the field of Anathoth from my cousin Hanamel and weighed out the money to him. Seventeen shekels of silver. I signed the deed, sealed it, got witnesses, and weighed the money on scales. Then I took the sealed, sealed deed of purchase, containing the terms and conditions in the open company, copy, and I gave the deed of purchase to Baruch, son of Neriah, son of Messiah, in the presence of my cousin Hanamel, in the presence of the witnesses who signed the deed of purchase, in the presence of all the Judeans who were sitting in the court of the guard. In their presence, I charged Baruch, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these deeds, both the sealed deed of purchase and this open deed, and put them in an earthenware jar to, in order that they may last for a long time. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Houses and fields and vineyards shall again be bought in this land. We're in a time when it feels so hard on us to be able to think about a future. We've been told to shelter at home. We're seeing all the things that are happening in our world that seem so out of sorts for us, seem unprecedented, and they are, because this is something new for at least this time in our world's life. But it's not the first time that we've had hardships. It's not the first time that God's people have had difficult times. But as you heard in the two scriptures today, there will be a time when all of this will be over, when there will be buying and selling of land and futures and all of those other wonderful things that we understand to be a special part of our lives. Because God is going to bring us home. Bring us into an opportunity so that we ourselves can see all the joy that comes from being a child of God. But don't sit there like this time of self-isolation is a time of only worry and frustration because God is giving us an opportunity to literally slow down and spend a little bit more time with God in prayer and in meditation in singing hymns of praise and in reading God's word. Take that opportunity, and I promise you, God will begin to fill your, fill your life even more with an understanding of blessing, an understanding of joy, and an excitement that will carry you to a point of knowing that God will see us through this time. Take that opportunity and look forward to the time when we are out from under this particular aspect of life. Let us pray. Amazing God, we thank you. We thank you that you are here and that you remind us in your word of times when others thought you had gone away and yet you were there. Help us also to remember that in your spirit and strength, 
we will find the courage and the ability, the opportunities to work together even as we work from home to see your blessings in our world come to fruition. And then as we do see ourselves out from under this particular unusual time of life, that you will help us to celebrate in joy, in wonder, in love, and in your peace. For we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Oh